In this video, I will walk you through the basic features of the PCSET graphics software. This will be identical for the Reiner 1025, 970, and 940. The only difference is the view that you're in. This is the quick start guide. If you have more in-depth questions once you've followed along with this video, please let us know and we will walk you through it live or create a new video just for you. The first step is going to be to click on the Reiner PC Set Graphics software to open it. This is the icon right here. Currently, I'm on the 1025 view. This view has one large window. If you look up on the right, you'll see the icon that looks like the 1025 right here. It will be grayed out if the machine is not plugged in as is shown now. It will be lit up if the machine is on and plugged in via the USB or connected via Bluetooth. I'm gonna turn on the machine right now for you and plug it in so you can see what that looks like. So now the machine is illuminated. It looks more like the 1025 and you have the green arrow facing to the right and this is the transfer button. Another way to check if you're in the correct view is to click on view. Again, this software is good for the three different machines. We have the 1025, the 970, and the 940. The one machine that is not shown in the drop down here is the one that's currently open on your screen. So right now we see the 970 and the 940. So we know that we're in the 1025 software view. If I unplug the 1025, then I can click on another option. So I'm gonna click on the 970. You can now see that the view has changed to four windows and the icon on the top has changed. When I plug in the 970, which I'm going to do for you right now, you will see that the icon lights up and looks like the 970. Now if I go to view, you will see that the 940 and the 1025 are options to click on because we're currently in the 970 view. Now when I unplug the 970 and click on the 940, the view changes again to the 940 view and you can see that this transfer button now looks more like the gun style 940 printer. So I'm gonna go back to the 1025 view and continue this video from the 1025 view. From left to right, we have some icons that are very important in the quick start guide. The first four picture icons are also available in the file drop-down menu as well. Either choose File New, or you can click on the sheet of paper icon and this is very similar to opening a blank document in Microsoft Word. Click File Settings Font, or you can click on the sheet of paper with the gear icon. There will be a link to another video coming up in this video that explains this further. Click File Open or the yellow file folder. This will open a window and enable you to open a previous imprint that you saved and you want to pull back up at a later time to edit or retransfer the information to your machine. Anytime you click on these icons, it will ask you if you want to save the file. You can either choose no like I did because I had a blank document and this file will not be saved, or you can click yes, and then you will need to name and save the file so that you can pull it up at a later date. 
the imprints should be saved under documents automatically like you can see here I have this PC and then it's in my documents and here's previously saved imprints that I have I'm going to skip over a few of the other icons at the moment as they're not used too often the most important icons are the A the calendar and clock icon which is the date and time the numbering icon and the barcode these icons are what you use to create your imprint to transfer to your machine so first up we have the text icon which is represented by a large capital A and this gives you static text so if we right click on the A and then left click on text format all of the fonts that are available in Microsoft Word on your computer will be available in the font on your software you can download additional fonts if necessary but you have many to choose from as you can see while I scroll through here choose your font so I'm currently on Arial, which is perfect for me. Um, regular, you can choose bold, italic, narrow, uh, as well as the size of the text. So we're going to stick with 12. And then I'm going to select OK. Now I'm going to left click on the A and drag down a text box to my window. Now all you have to do is type the desired text. For a second line, you have two options. One, you can hold the CTRL button on your keyboard and hit enter, and you see it will advance to the next line. And then you can type in your next line. Or you can left click on the A and drag down a second or third or fourth text box, however many you might need. Another thing that you can do is right click on the text box and then left click on text format and again you can go in and change the font, font style and size for that specific box and it will not change any other boxes that you have already brought down into your viewing window. So I'll change here to 18 so you can see the difference and type in So this window actually represents the full imprint size of the 1025, which is one inch height here. And then you can see the ruler on the top, which goes to three and a half inches. You can actually right click on this ruler and change the unit to millimeter, inch, or pixel. If you want to change the size of the text in a box that you've already created, you do this the same way I showed you in a blank box. You can do this with an empty text box or a text box that you've already put information into. So I'm going to right click and then left click on text format. And then I'm going to change the text to eight point so that you can see the font size change. So now we still have all the same information. The text is just smaller. Keep in mind, when you right click on the A and change the information via the A icon, every time you pull down a new text box, it will be fixed at that specific font and text size you entered until you go back and make a change. So you can see this is still 12 point. I pull down another one. Again, we're at 12 point. If I go back like this, and change it to 24 point and I pull down you'll see 
this will continuously pull down the 24 point until I go back again and make another change. And now we have seven point. To move the text boxes around, you double click the left button on the mouse somewhere within a text box. You will see that the window goes gray. Now you can move the box around. Anywhere within the window you can move these grayed out boxes. To edit a grayed out text box at any point, double click the left button on the mouse somewhere in the gray window. You will see the box change back to white and the cursor will begin to blink. Now you can edit the text. The date time icon in the software looks like a calendar and a clock. This gives you a live date and time that continues to automatically update. It pulls this information directly from your current computer date and time. If your computer date and time is set incorrectly, it will pull that information to your software. The first thing that you do is right click on the icon and then left click on the date time format. And then you can go ahead and choose the date or time format that you want. You can choose from these here. Uh, we have various options that are just the date, various options that are just the time, as well as combined formats of date and time together. Um, if for some reason the format is not here that you like, we can do a custom format. Uh, I can show you how to do that at a later date. And if you need to do a automatically updating date or time that's actually in the future, that's where this time offset comes in. So this first part is for the date and this second part is for the time. Right now you can see the current format I have here is 4 2 21 am So let's do an offset of 10 days. If I go here and delete those two zeros and then add 10, you can see that the date has now jumped to 412 to my current date. If I want to change the time here, I could add an hour, delete this zero here, add a one, and you can see that it jumped to 1144 AM. The last thing that you do in this window is select font 1 or font 2. To see how to change font 1 and font 2, watch the beginning part of the video that I have linked here called Tech Video Series Sequential Numbering Tutorial Part 1. Once we have selected our font, we are going to hit OK. And then we will left click and drag down the date and the time icon. So you can see this is now a live date and time in a minute uh, that will actually change to 1146 and we did keep the offset as 10 days in the future and one hour in the future from my current date and time. The next icon is the numbering machine icon. That's this one right here and this enables sequential numbering. So right click and then left click. Select the options that you need. You can see there are various options, step width, repeats, minimum, maximum, actual value, as well as those two font choices again. Please see the videos linked here. I have two separate videos that explain this numbering machine format icon. If I hit OK, and then I will drag down my numbering machine icon, you can see I have a whole lot of zeros because I didn't input any other information, but if I go ahead and transfer this information to my machine and I click the, the trigger button, it would sequence to one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. 
So the next on our list is the barcode icon, which is located right here. We can right click and then left click, and then we can choose the barcode type. There are various options here. Once you choose the barcode that you would like, you can then type in the information for your character sequence and then hit OK. And then you left click on the barcode and drag it down. So right now we have the human readable by selecting plain text. If I unselect that and hit OK and then I drag down another barcode, you can see the human readable is gone. Here we have the blue graphic file folder. If you want to upload a graphic onto your device, make sure the graphic is in a format of JPEG, TIFF, GIF, or BMP. There are two ways to get an icon into your machine. One, you will left click on this blue file and then find your graphic. So you can search through your computer files and it will be where you saved it. I've saved it conveniently to my desktop for this and I'm going to double click on this icon or I can single click to select it and then click open. And you can see that the graphic has uploaded into my software. Now if I use this cursor here I can shrink the graphic as well. The second way to get a graphic within your window is to have it on your desktop like I have right here and left click and drag and drop. Again, it successfully goes into my software. Okay, well, now I've made a complete mess in here as we can see and no one wants to see this imprint. And so I think it would be helpful if you actually know how to delete some of the text that you put into your window. To delete, all you have to do is right click on any of the boxes and then left click on delete object and it disappears. So I'm just going to continue to clean up this print that I'm creating here. I think we can delete this one as well. All right, so this looks great. And I would like to now transfer this information to my machine. So I have to make sure that my machine is turned on and plug in the unit with the micro USB which would be connected to the USB on your computer, or you'd have to go through setting up Bluetooth and then you don't actually have to physically connect it. Check to see if the icon at the top of your software is illuminated. Left click on the machine with the green arrow that's facing to the right. That's this one right here, and that's the transfer button. A pop-up will appear, as we see here, asking if we would like to replace the data. If you have something pre-programmed into your machine already and you click yes to replace it, it will delete what's on the machine in that slot. If you say no, it will automatically go to the next open slot in your machine and it will not erase anything that you have stored in your machine at this time. If there isn't already a file with the same name in your machine, it will not ask you this question and it will just transfer the information. So if you had gone to file, save as, and then save this as a test, you know, one, two, three, four, or had a specific name for it, and none of those names were the same, this little pop-up wouldn't appear and it would just transfer to the machine. You can see now if I'm going to hit, let's see, I'll choose no, I don't want to replace it. And you can see here now at the bottom that the progress bar quickly went to 100% and it says transfer successful. So I'm going to hit OK. Now you're ready to insert your cartridge if you haven't already and start printing. 
If your cartridge is installed, you will notice an ink drop right here on the right hand bottom corner of the machine software indicating the ink level in your cartridge. So mine is actually at 93%. Another thing that you can see here is the battery. My battery is fully charged and this shows that it is connected via the USB. It also shows here that the machine is online and if for some reason you ever were to get an error on your machine, if you plug it in, it will often show you some information on the error at this bottom bar of the software. If you want to know approximately how many imprints you will get out of a cartridge, based on the current imprint in the window, hover your cursor over the little cartridge on the left hand side of the software. It shows you the MP and the S. That MP is for quick dry metal plastic and the S is for water-based ink. We always estimate 5 to 10 percent less based on wiping the cartridge and test imprints. Another way to delete imprints off your machine is to click on File, Print Image Management. Then you will see all of the messages that are currently loaded onto your device. You can see that I currently have 42. If you've named them, the document will show a name, and if not, it will just say document and a number, as well as which slot it's taking up on your machine. You can either select one and then click delete, or you can select one, hold shift down on your keyboard, plus the down arrow or the up arrow, and select multiple imprints at a time, you'll see they're highlighted, and then you can click delete and it will delete all of those at one time. Everything that I just explained applies to the view for the 970 and the 940 as well. The only difference is that these two machines can only hold four imprints within them at one time, while the 1025 can actually hold 255. So I'm going to unplug the 1025 now and go to the view of the 970. You see with the 970 view that you have one, two, three, and four, and your entire imprint actually needs to be within the dotted line. So you have, this is one imprint, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Right now, this graphic is actually in between one and two. If I went ahead and transferred that, and then I put the dial to one or two, I would just see the top portion in one or the bottom portion in two. So this is not the correct way to lay out your 970. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rearrange these so that you see proper layouts for the 970 or the 940. So I'll actually drag this graphic down to three and I'm going to shrink this barcode just a little bit. Um, move this around and now we have the information input into this space the way that it should be. If I hover over one it will show me again the amount of possible imprints per cartridge for the quick drying and the water base. This one's saying approximately 105,000. Uh, if I go to two you can see I'm at 47,000 for the quick dry and that's because barcodes actually use up a lot more ink. That means you're going to get fewer imprints per cartridge. At three, I'm at about 59,000. And four, it's not going to give me any information because I don't have anything input into that slot. If I then wanted to transfer this information to my 970, all I would do is plug my 970 in and go ahead and hit the transfer button. I would like to replace present data. That is the only way that you can upload new information because this machine can only hold four imprints. So I'm going to say yes, and then you will see the progress bar go to 100% and say transfer successful. Now again, I can put in the cartridge and I'm ready to print with my 970. One other thing that you can do if you need help is to go to the help 
drop down menu here, if I click on this and then click help, you'll see that the 970 help section appears. I'm going to shrink this to fit. And you'll know that you're in the right help section because it will show a picture of the 970 here and then you can search, look through the index or the contents to find more information. If I were to go back and switch to the 1025 view and go to help, you will see that this is the help section for the 1025 and that same thing would apply for the 940. This is Stephanie from Automated Marking. I hope you found this technical video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We look forward to assisting you with your marking and coding projects.